What's up, fam? Welcome to another edition of Man to Man, a wellness series where we're chopping it up with other brothers to get their insight on how to go from hellness to wellness. I'm David Wazicki, your certified transformational nutrition coach. And today we're back again with another great brother to talk to. He's a global executive, certified yoga and meditation teacher, and honestly, so much more. Can't wait to get into this one. So please give it up for America's mental health motivator, the hey. James Nicholas Kenny. What's Thank up? You, That's a great <laughs> intro, man. I appreciate it. I feel motivated by you. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm here for you. We're here for each other. Okay. We're going to exchange that energy, that good energy. Um, and you said it. I mean, you said it off from the top before you even got on here. You said it off with some Erica Badu. Uh, <laughs> so already picking up on that vibe. Um, there are a lot of places to get started with this conversation. We're going to start it the way we start it with every conversation here around these man-to-man -man streets, and that's getting you man-to-man -man blue check certified. It's one question we ask every man that's yet to yield the same answer twice. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, James, what does masculinity mean to you? To me, it means servant leadership, protection, and providing. Mm. Wow. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, servant leadership, protecting and providing. I think that cover. I think that covers it all. <laughs> yeah. I, to, to elaborate. Yes, please. If we look at energy as a commodity, if we could, hmm. and we would say that masculinity or femininity um, is energy, which I believe that it is. I'm, I can already tell from your aura that that's absolutely what you're channeling. But if masculinity was corn, to use an analogy, that it would be a physical manifested commodity. I think mm -hmm. that the way that it shows up, right, if it were an energy, is that true masculinity is not fear, it's not anger, it's not a lot of those things that you would see in movies, television, music, and or even what we're taught, that it is about that servant leadership, and that is the role of masculinity in the world and then the protecting and the providing piece imagine a world where that was the emphasis and the clear definition of what masculinity is it would be astronomically different if men had that understanding from an early age and through the end of life because there's not a time when it's not available yeah a man just has to step into it you can be 55 you can be 75 or 85 or five, and you can step into what that energy could and should be like. Mm -hmm. James, I love it. Certified, absolutely. Um, but I, I, I love that. And I, I love that context because I know for myself, when, when you said you, you feel that from me and you're, you're picking up on my energy, I'm absolutely a believer in that, but it's taken time. It's taken time from where I started, how I was raised, the societal norms, quote unquote, if you will, that was put upon me of how I was supposed to think of how a man was supposed to be and go through life. And, you know, only until recently ha have I continued on this journey where my mind has continued, thankfully, to expand and to understand things on a bigger, grander level in the way that you just explained. Can you tell me where did this understanding begin for you? Where did this all start kind of unveiling itself for you? Mm. Well, one of the one of my favorite books that's helped me understand it is uh, David Data, Way of the Superior Man. Have you mm. read it? I'm yeah. waiting to read it. It's in my it's in my book queue. I have a book queue. I'm too behind from that, but that one's coming up. Yeah, it's really powerful in terms of what masculine energy is when it's when it's deployed, how to harness it, how to develop it. I don't really think there's any other book like it. Um, mm -hmm. I think the Bible also has a lot of remarkable stories and information, um, parables, proverbs, etc., on what masculinity in men could and should be. But for me, I think the story I think started. I'm going to say in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, I was a child that was recognized for being different. 
and I was uh, recognized for being different in terms of my ability to speak, communicate, um, entertainment skills. And that's the first time that I recognized that I had an energy in a room that was potent and powerful. Mm -hmm. um, but due to childhood, childhood trauma, like a lot of us, and there's various forms of trauma, I always say there's like little micro T's, um, yeah. small T's, medium T's, and big T's. You know, a yeah. big T might be the death of a, a loved one, right? Or a divorce and little, little, little micro T's. You can have a thousand of them and still have a lot of challenges in life. So I'm not trying to diminish the level of traumas that people have. Anyway, but for me, um, because of some of those traumas, I was pretty insecure and I didn't know it um, through, not necessarily through the high school years, but I think I was recovering from trauma in the late twenties to early thirties. And it wasn't until I snapped out of those insecurities that I really started to be able to, what I would say, like expand my heart chakra, or open my chest mm, and just be yeah. super comfortable with being like, I'm a full man, give zero. And I'm just whole. And it was because I was healed. And I don't think a man can get to it unless they're really healed. So if you think about like, DMX, I'm just going to use one people, one, one person as an example. I mean, based off of his voice, based off of the dog bark, based, right. based off of the chain and hip hop, you would be like, that is man, man, you know, Tretch right. from yeah. Naughty by Nature. You know, I kind of get these like Greek like objects of, you know, super swole dudes that kind of exhibited that. But then when you look at DMX and the end of his life, um, you know, the, his addiction to crack and, and drugs without that healing, mm -hmm. he would probably say from heaven right now that he never fully stepped into um, the masculinity that I think was possible, even with all of his success. Like, yeah. did you hear that audio clip at the end of the Andre 3000 and uh, Kanye um, uh, latest to the party? Uh, I forgot what that song was, but it was it was a leak off of Donda with, mm -hmm. with Andre 3000. Did, did, you, did you hear it? I know what you're talking about, but I'm, I'm curious what what lyric. Yeah, what, there was uh, an audio yeah. clip. There was an audio clip at the end of DMX because I Googled it and I was like, who is that? Yeah. And it was DMX encouraging one of his kids to jump in the pool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And man, it was so I mean, it makes me cry right now thinking about it because when you talk about the protector and the provider, bro, it was like, mm. that is masculinity. It's not what we say in rap music. Yeah. It's not guns in Chirac yeah. or yeah. in South Central. Right. It was that. Yeah. And man, that, that audio clip was powerful. Yeah. I have to go back to that one. I, I now I know what you're you're talking about. Once you brought that particular moment up, I yeah, yeah man. like I have chills because I, I recall it now. <laughs> I mean, bro, it, it's like that is that is that is man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, even going beyond that, so we're talking about you know evolution, what a real man quote unquote, you know, how we should be as an evolved man, I think is what you and I are trying to get at. Um, there was something that happened, if you can share with us on your 30th birthday. Um, mm -hmm. I think you label it like a crash and burn moment. And it was possibly an aha moment. So I'd really love for you to go into that uh, storyline, because I think it's very fitting for how this conversation is going so far. Yeah, alcohol was something that was readily available for me, like it is for many people. And I had a lot of success in college as a musician. Mm -hmm. And I was playing in four or five states um, touring while wow. I was still in college at Oklahoma State. <clears throat> so when I graduated college and I stepped into the adult professional world or whatever, you know, alcohol was still something that was just, again, super regular. And I, I kind of call it an occupational hazard when you're playing in a band and you get free and un, unlimited drinks. So I did music on night and weekends and was fortunate enough to you know play all over the world and lots of different things like that. But on my 30th birthday, I, I went back to Austin, Texas, where is one of one of my homes and certainly my, my spiritual home. 
and I was the Austin City Limits Music Festival, and I had been drinking for the three days during the festival. Um, and on the fourth day when the festival was over, um, I just had a full bodily shutdown, just severely, de severely dehydrated. Wow. And um, it felt like a seizure or a stroke um, mm. is the only way that I can kind of put it into context. But 30 is young. I mean, yeah. so, some of you who are 24 might be saying 30, that's so old. <laughs> no, 30 is really young. Um, <clears throat> so at on my 30th birthday, literally, God was like, aha, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because like, how, how do you go to the emergency room on your birthday? Right. And it literally right. happened on my now. This is where we get into the spiritual, David, because if you think about it, and you, again, you kind of do the aha, like Greek, Greek mythology, Jesus, Allah, however you want to talk about it. It's literally like, how are you going to go to the emergency room and almost die on your 30th birthday? speaking to myself, bro, you must have some trauma that you have not worked out or worked through. Yeah. Cause this is a clear sign yeah. that you need to go in a different direction. Yeah. And what, what happened is that I had been suppressing a lot through my journey of who I am, who I was supposed to be 30 is heavy for a lot of people. And I'm really happy that you have this show because I've never seen a black male conversation about becoming 30. Um, I do have a friend who has an almost 30 podcast and there's a lot of kind of, you know, societal funny stuff around. I want to be a millionaire by I was 30. I want to have my first bins by I was 30. Right. I wanted to right. do all this stuff by the time that I was 30. But I got to 30 and I don't really think it had anything to do with alcohol. Now that I know what I know, I think I was dehydrated. I think I was tired. I think I was pushing the limits. Mm -hmm. But my 30th birthday going to the emergency room with the medical episode that I have praying for Jamie Foxx, by the way, full recovery. I love Jamie Foxx. When I say medical event, yeah, um, yeah. that's kind of what I'm alluding to, but, um, I fully recovered. And from that day on my life changed, I went through a three year spiral of anxiety and depression hmm. and I was fighting. I mean, I, I had Satan on one shoulder, the, the devil on another shoulder. I had panic attacks. I had agoraphobia. Hmm. Um, I did everything I could just to stay above water, man. It was, it was, it was real, real. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But what that did, David, is that it allowed me to be the ad industries therapist that I am now. It allowed me to now become the founder of the Advertising Alliance for Mental Health. It has allowed me to serve twenty five thousand employees around the world and travel to thirty plus countries. It allowed me to do all the things that I am now being a global chief executive. If I hadn't have gone through that at 30, now at 45, I really don't believe I would be where I am. So I was able to turn that pain into profit. I was able to turn that pain into passion. I was able to turn that pain into purpose. And now I'm able to work with so many people across the world, black, non-black, brothers and sisters of all types to help them really transform their lives. So that's what happened. And again, there was a reason for that season. Yeah. Um, powerful. And there's also a lot to unpack there because you mentioned, a, you know, a few things that are heavy, that are a lot to deal with mm -hmm. agoraphobia, uh, depression, anxiety. So mm -hmm. let's rewind a little bit. Sure. When it comes to depression where and, and anxiety, for that matter, I mean, we can throw in the agoraphobia too, uh, which, you know, just for those listening and watching, ju just to understand it, that's when you are, you have like this extreme fear of being in open or crowded places. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that's correct. So, so you have this, you have depression, you have anxiety, you have all of this going on for three years. What started to break through for you? What was the thing or things that helped you to start navigating these issues? Because again, right now, you know, some folks say we're in a, you know, mental health crisis, or we are. that's the pandemic, right? So to, to come out of the other pandemic, 
uh, with these things for you in particular, you faced it, you've clearly come out of it shining uh, and now using that uh, uh, to serve. Mm -hmm. Where did it start where you said, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I can Mm -hmm. do that. Oh, these are the things. Um, Mm -hmm. I'd I'd love for you to speak on that. Yeah, thanks, David. So um, one of my favorite books and the first book that I read on my 50 book journey was uh, James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. And I highly recommend anyone who's watching this show, please read James Allen as a man thinker. He was a 19th century um, philosopher and uh, maybe 20th century, but a long time ago. The book is in <laughs> old, old English, so it's kind of hard to oh, read. Wow. But he talks about something very simple and profound. And he says that the acorn becomes the oak tree. And it's remarkably powerful. I think of Eckhart Tolle, lots of different new yeah, age yeah, philosophers, yeah. school philosophers. But yeah. when I say the acorn becomes the oak tree, I had a belief that at some point in my life in the future, I was going to be healed and I was going to be better. So if it wasn't for that faith of a mustard seed, acorn becomes the oak tree, whatever analogy that you want to say, even though I was completely messed up and I was completely not myself, I was a shell of myself. I knew deep down inside, you are not completely gone. You are not completely lost, even though I literally can't see. You know how you're driving in the storm and yeah. you went your wipers and yeah. you can't see? I, yeah. I couldn't see. I couldn't see tomorrow. I couldn't see next week. But I knew I was just holding on to that acorn. That acorn was like in my fist on lock. Hmm. And I held on to that acorn the whole time. I had good days and I had bad days. I'm actually helping someone right now. And I gave them the, the formula that I use to help people. And uh, it's not one formula, there's many, but I'm helping sure. someone right now. And I, and I talked to them about this, that it, there's a spiritual component, there's a physical component. So I walked every day. I lost 40 pounds. I mean, it was like a Rocky movie. Yeah. I treated it like I had cancer, which knock on wood, I don't. And I did not. And I will not. But I treated it like I had cancer. I, I read every book. I learned everything I could. I went to church every time the doors opened. I walked mm-hmm. out in, in nature. I, I sat next to trees, talked to my mama, yeah. talked to my best friend, listened to a lot of music. Eric Badu, going back yeah. to that. But I went all out war on it mm. because that was the only way to go. But I tried medication. Medication didn't work for me personally. I am an advocate for, uh, for uh, med- medication for those who need it. But I became a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher because I said, I need to have these these skills and tools for me. And then as I master these, I can then use them for other people. So the short of it is that it was a combination formula of a lot of things. But the one thing that I had is that acorn. And there was one pivotal moment. There was a pivotal moment where I was driving. I had both hands on the wheel. So you can kind of picture it like, like, like a movie. Yeah. And I had both hands on the wheel and I was driving. And I said, James, I love you too much to continue on this path. You have to heal now. And it was almost like, and then, and you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I'm telling you, both hands on the wheel. Yeah. I, and, and I, it was like, you know, I was talking to me, James, I love you too much and the acorn, bro. I mean, like, it sounds yeah. simple, but that is profound. Very, very. I mean, there, so <laughs> in that, you know, I, I'm i trying to think of how to start this while not, uh, <laughs> while, while being sensitive uh, to just certain dynamics. You effectively, in that, speaking to yourself, you're affirming. Mm -hmm. you're course correcting, you're verbalizing. So you're speaking into action. There's just in in that one, you know, what some would see as just this little thing that you did is truly profound. I I agree with you fully because this was your aha moment. This was your, this is what's going to happen, James. Speaking to James, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm no longer going to do. This no longer serves me. This is how I'm going to move forward. And then you put action behind that thinking, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, a, a lot of times, I mean, I, I say, generally speaking, 
um, um, faith without action is just hope. It's a whole lot of hope, a whole lot of hope. <laughs> we got to put action behind that hope in order to make it something, make it tangible, yeah. put out there to whomever you believe in, whatever you believe in to say, hey, look at me. I'm actually doing the thing that you're empowering me to do. So I have faith that you're going to continue to guide me through it. So, you know, again, you know, to your point, Buddha, Krishna, Allah, Jesus, whoever you or whatever source, higher power spirit that you want to put into that, you have to show up that you're willing to, that's your faith. You're willing to step out, literally step out on faith and put some action behind it. So yeah, to me, I mean, that was powerful that that's, you said it. <laughs> and so it is. And the action made it so. And, you know, to continue down this road, I'm, I'm intrigued about the 50 books uh, uh, that you mentioned. You said you had a 50 book journey. Was this intentional where you just where a number hit you and came to mind and said 50 books it is? Yeah. So I literally wrote myself a prescription and <laughs> the, the person that I'm helping it. right now. I, I, I help a lot of people. I, I like, that's literally what my purpose is now. I gave them the prescription. So when I, when I spoke to them, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna put you on game and I'm gonna give you a prescription. And, um, there's something in ancient text called a gnosis spelled G N O S I S. David, I love that you know everything. Else. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't meet a lot of people who like, you know what I mean? That's, that's dope. Anyway. Now let the good people know what that means. Let the good people know. Yeah, exactly. So a um, gnosis means knowledge and then a Gnostic, or when you hear people say agnostic, that's mm -hmm. where that term comes from. But a Gnostic is these people who actually taught Christians. They were like the most wisest of wise. Yeah. So before Christianity was created, the, the Gnostics were the people who put everybody on game to use our language, right? Yeah. So anyway, I was like, I'm about to get next level on this stuff. <laughs> so I went to UCLA. I took a course on neuroscience. I went to Stanford and I took a course on like culture and human behavior. And then I read The Power Right Now and I read... Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on with no, you got all 50 the of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, with, with, with 50 different books. Uh, David Data, um, yeah. uh, The Way of the Superior Man, is Essentialism by Greg McEwen. I mean, I can go on and on with the mm. different books. Of course, of Miracles, Marianne Williamson. So yeah. from all those books, what I was able to do is really extract a playbook that really worked for me. And I guess my point of bringing up the... Uh, Gnostics or you're being knowledgeable is that for anybody out here, sometimes people, I remember like I met with a junior strategist the other week, beautiful sister. She's like super, super dope. And I was like, yo, I was like, do you know any other black female strategist in the advertising industry? And she said, no. I was like, I, I know a sister who runs Netflix. I'll send her a note so you can connect. And she says, well, how did you become where you um, are now? And I, I answer her in a very simple way. And this is the same way that you know, I think what you asked the question for me is I said, I decided that I wasn't going to be outread. Hmm. That was it. Wow. I was like, I'm going to read everything there is to know about anxiety, depression. I literally read the DSM. Really? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I read DSM three. Cause I was like, but 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 bro, when and you're I'm not trying to make an R. Kelly joke, but I'm going to make an R. Kelly joke. <laughs> Go for it. When, when you're trapped in the closet with agoraphobia, you don't want to live like that. Bro, yeah. I, I was missing birthdays. Yeah. Missing, I mean, you missing life three years? Yeah. I was going to say that. Three yeah. years of missing life? Yeah. Not going to concerts? Overweight? knowing that someday I wanted to be who I am now, I I went ham mm. on the knowledge because I believe that was the only way. I mean, it's like finance. Who that's remarkably successful in finance learned that from a school exclusively? Right. No one. Right. 
School is literally just the beginning. You get your MBA, congratulations. <laughs> After that, you got a whole other journey. Correct. You yeah. know what I mean? So yep. people get their PhD and after the PhD, that's when you actually start to study yeah. and experiment. Yeah. So I, I hope that resonates with the men that are listening because don't underestimate the power of the ability to educate yourself. And don't sleep on the fact that in 2023, soon 2024, it's a knowledge economy exclusively. And the world is designed to confuse you. And it, it is actually heading in a direction where the ignorant will perish. Mm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Facts. Facts. So, so when we say hashtag, if you know, you know, you better know, or you'll mm. be in the, the camps in L.A., Mm. I, I'm not trying to scare people, but I'm being, su this, this is, I'm, I'm firing shots right now. Cause, cause I, I need people to, to, to understand this. If you don't know the tax codes, what happens? You overpay. Right. Knowledge. W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass. What did they have? Knowledge. That knowledge. Yeah. No, you're so right. You're so right. And, you know, touching, <laughs> touching on how we're moving in this economy and how we're moving in terms of technological advances right now, everybody's talking about AI, generative AI, chat GPT. The sooner you embrace, because there's always a fear, there's always a fear. It's, it's a human, it's just a human condition. It goes back to the fight or flight that which is unknown, you become afraid of. However, someone like yourself, where you have embraced the challenge of, I will continuously learn and apparently outlearn <laughs> others, mm -hmm. you, you've embraced a challenge in effect of saying, well, this is something new. I'm excited to learn about it. It's not, I fear it, I challenge accepted. And now we're going to move and we're going to learn how to empower oneself with this new knowledge. How can I better myself? How can I, to the point of servitude and leadership, even on a, on a family level, this doesn't have to, you know, I, I think there's something when, you know, I speak to other folks on, on this podcast and just hear about things, you know, out in, you know, social and, you know, digitally where, you start hearing about service and leadership when it comes to personal development. And I, I feel some folks may get overwhelmed by that notion because it's, oh my God, well, how am I going to lead and, and serve, you know, all of these people that's, that's not in my DNA or that's not my purpose. But what if you have a family? What if you're in a relationship? What if you're raising a young one? What if you are still single and still finding yourself? their service to yourself. And I always say, serve yourself so that you can serve others. So like, mm -hmm. as you did, I, I, I feel like you are a shining example of that. Serve yourself in order to be able to serve others. When these new advances pop up, don't shy away from it. Be intrigued, be curious. Why? How? How is that going to impact? And as you hear, you know, as media does, put out all of the, you know, red flags and the doomsday headlines. Look at the positive benefits. Look how quickly you can build a business, how you can get grasp more knowledge, how you can further yourself, better yourself. I mean, you, you, you plowed through 50 books with chat GPT, you could get cliff notes. And if you're more intrigued, then you go back and you finish reading the books, but you can download in a fraction of the time that it took you to read the book and you can get those high powered notes and, and ruminate on it and affirm yourself through it. And I mean, I, I get excited because I am one of those folks, as you would imagine that I look, yeah. <laughs> try, trying to put myself on, on, the, on that uh, level. But yeah, it's let's embrace so that we can, you know, to your point, like you don't know what you don't know. Let's embrace the unknown so that we can better ourselves collectively and share 
the knowledge of, of what we gain. And in your case, that's what you're doing. And that's what you're doing with, um, with your multiple platforms, because you're, you're, um, you're doing so much. I, I do want to jump into sure, please. Um, the, the one wellness path, but I do, let me just, before we do, cause again, there was just so much you mentioned earlier in, in that, in that one, um, stream of thought that you had mm-hmm. when it came to meditating, cause this is, this is one thing I'm a huge believer in. I just want to make sure it is, uh, I want to make sure people feel it's attainable. You also alluded to Christianity and Christianity, uh, references. So mm-hmm. it sounds like you're either of the faith knowledge full of it, because I feel like a lot of those in the Christian faith shy away from meditation because they say that's Mm -hmm. new world. That is, you know, that that's not, that's not us that that's some old, you know, Mm -hmm. woo woo out there, but it sounds like you've embraced that among other things, which I I can just feel, I, I can understand from the books you've referenced, how deep you've gone. And I'd love to talk to you personally Mm -hmm. offline about that. Um, however, I want to make it approachable because meditation is something that helped me. Uh, I was, uh, I was depressed for a number of years. I I can't Mm. even, I don't even know the specific window of time, but it was at least, I don't know, two, three years. I keep saying, so I think that's pretty accurate. A long time to be depressed, brother. I'm I'm glad you're better. Thank you. Thank you. And meditation helped. And I just, like you did, I I started learning about meditation. Like, oh, there, you can meditate this way. You can meditate that way. Wait, you can meditate. Mm -hmm a hundred different ways to Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I, I just, if you can affirm, you know, reaffirm that to let people know it's, it's easy to do. It's science backed. There's so many, so much research that just continues to come out to support meditation. And I'd love for you to just speak on how you approached it. Yeah, man, you are definitely next level because you're one of the only people that I've talked to that also knows that you can meditate a hundred different ways. Most people don't know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the easiest way to say it is the uh, um, meditation is not not thinking. And right. that's the biggest first mistake yeah. that people assume. It's like saying like, I ain't flexible. I can't do yoga. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's okay. You can do yoga without being flexible as well. So the easiest way to break it down is like a practice is something that you do repetitively over and over again. You can Google that right now and it'll tell you that a practice is something that you do repetitively over and over again. Through a practice, you receive a series of results and the results that you will receive from the attempt of meditating, which we'll get here to a moment, is a calmer central nervous system, lower cortisol, which is a stress hormone, healing the amygdala, which is where a lot of trauma is triggered and and stored. And I can go on with the neuroscience, but I'll try to be easy Mm -hmm. on that. So that's the importance of a practice, meaning that you do it one day for 20 seconds. That's a win. You do it the next day for 20 seconds. That's a win. You do it for seven weeks, 20 seconds at a time. That's a win. You do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 20 seconds each. That's also a win. So it's literally about the practice. And most people completely, that goes over them. So the way that I like to teach meditation to people is something really super simple. Imagine that you're in the desert and you're laying on your back in the sand so that you have that feeling of being surrounded by warmth. You could also say that you're laying on your back in the ocean so that it's buoyant or in the pool. But if you look up at the sky, you've seen this since you were born. Clouds come and go, come and go, come and go. When you're anxious, having a panic attack, or you're just on TikTok, scroll, 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 (laughs) scroll, or or at work or in traffic, you're going to have 30,000 clouds in a day. Clouds just coming by, coming by, coming by, coming by, coming by. What meditation will allow you to do, which is focusing on one cloud at a time and observing that cloud going from right to left if the wind was going in that direction. The act of slowing down your thoughts and observing your thoughts 
allows you to create that separation. That separation then creates healing. It creates space. It allows you the ability to concentrate. Couple things that are happening. We talk about this proliferation of ADHD. Where do we think it's coming from? The phone. Right. right. The apps are gamified to make you have ADHD so that you scroll right. more. That's literally the truth and how it works. So meditation, whether you're doing a breathing focus meditation, a visual meditation with your eyes open, candles, music, humming, chants, counting numbers, colors, all the things that, that, that I know that you, you, you know, the act of just taking five deep breaths in, five deep breaths out, et cetera, any form of meditation with a practice literally will transform your life. And it really helps you become more productive and more solvent in your thoughts and your speaking ability and in your cognitive ability. Because we got to remember that this thing is a computer yeah. and it needs time to rest, just like you have to update your OS on your Apple um, or on your Android, the brain needs the same thing. So I hope I did a decent job of just talking about meditation in a super simple way. But to your point, not religious. And yes, I am a Christian, but it's not religious. It is scientific in terms of the benefits that it does for the brain. You don't have to be a certain gender, you don't have to be a certain race, and you don't have to be from a certain country. The Vedic traditions of India go thousands of years back as the innovators of the practice. However, in Africa, because I think it's important, Africa is never brought up when some of yeah. the most amazing yeah. things in the whole world come from Africa. Meditation has roots through Africa first, through Asia, <clears throat> and of course, through Europe and the Americas. Yeah, no, you did an amazing job. It was calming just to hear. And I, I gave <laughs> myself that moment just to go through that practice, uh, that, that simple visualization with the yeah. clouds. I forgot about that one. That, that was one from, you know, yeah. one, meditation 101. So I love yeah. that you brought that here. And again, it is, it's that simple that I hope folks are empowered to take action on after listening and watching this because it is one of those, you make it a practice, you will have profound results. It has helped me so much. It sounds like it's helped you so much. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, next things I, I do want to get into as we do every episode, because as with this, I, I always love to leave listeners, viewers with some type of action and some firsthand action and examples of what you do, what does a typical day in wellness look like for James? I know meditation is one of them, uh, but if you, if you can go through that, I'd love to be able to share that um, because I think it's always important. That's why I always love to include this. Yeah. The, so the ultimate day for me is um, my morning meditation that I always do, but then two yoga nidras in addition to that hmm. and yoga nidra is a laying down meditation that takes you into theta state which is a deeper guided meditation but <clears throat> it's like getting up in the morning doing my regular 10 minute meditation being in nature with some sort of really dope hike slash workout hmm. two yoga nidras if i can get them in um sweet green salad with double chicken <laughs> lots of hydration and crazy amounts of Robert Glasper. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, and then I like to be a, 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 alone a lot. So like the meditation, the two Nidras, the dope hike, the sweet green, the Robert Glasper, bro, I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> Man, you made me feel good. I, whew. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, that, that's a whole day. That, that is, yeah. that is vibe on vibe on vibe right there. Yeah. That is, I, I love it. I love it. And me, yeah, I'm an ambivert. I mean, I'm a Gemini. So I love yeah, my okay. personal time and then I yes. love to show up and show out and peacock when I need to, um, yes. <laughs> but then I need to, I need to recoup. So I need to yes. get into my, you know, back into my mental calm state. I love that. I love yeah. that. James, there's a lot here that I want to talk to you about. I specifically want to bring you back for part two because we, we haven't even scratched the surface as it relates to what you do with corporate wellness, what you do mm -hmm. 
with um, with the Advertising Alliance for Mental Health, which folks can look up, you know, when they look you up on the gram and such and, and go to your website, which I will give you a moment to, uh, to uh, let the good people know about. But there's so much there. And I feel like, especially what we mentioned a few moments ago about just this new pandemic that that's taking hold as it relates to mental health and we all got to work <laughs> we all got to work i really want to dive into that and bring you back for that so one i'm putting you on the spot here because I'm, I'm hopeful that yeah. you'll say yes please um, yeah thank you awesome um and two i yeah like i said i i think it's important i i think you know we spend so much time i forget what the statistic is but we spend so much time at work as part of our livelihood, we need to ensure that we're, you know, that we're there mentally, that we're there physically, that we're there emotionally. Um, mm -hmm. There was something, I think the ones that, that I do remember is, you know, 69, 70% of folks are impacted by their boss in terms of if they're going to like their job, love their job, get stressed out by their job, it's by, it's by their that one person allowing that one person to control. I'm gonna stop there because I'm I'm ready to jump into that conversation. But I'd love to have you back, and I'm, I'm glad you said yes to bring you back for part two. Um, in the meantime, if there is anything or any things you want to share with the good people, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, David. Definitely an honor to come back. Love this conversation again. I we we really resonate in a lot of really unique and powerful ways. So shout out yeah. to you on your journey as well, man. I know. Thank you, brother. You know, three-ish years of being depressed. That's a long time to be depressed. It, 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 it's, it's, it's an eternity. So I'm, I'm thankful you're on the other side. And exactly. um, this is a beautiful platform that we need because the way that we're having this conversation isn't clinical and it's approachable right. and it's realistic. And that's, that's what people really have to embrace and understand. So I'm, I'm thankful that we can both be conduits for people to lean into that. But <clears throat> for those of you listening, just go to advertisingmentalhealth.com. Super simple. Sign up and you get a weekly meditation and affirmation from me that comes to your inbox every single Monday. It's a completely free platform. You don't have to be in the advertising um, industry. And I think that's the best way to connect with me. Uh, yeah. I want to be mindful to like, follow, whatever. TikTok yeah. Is <laughs> yeah, I got all that. But if people really want to connect with me, then they should hear my voice and they should hear me teach meditation and speak words of faith um, mm. and purpose into people. So my recommendation is if you really want to get right on the mental health perspective, breathe with me, listen mm. to me, affirm you and your life. And wow. that's the best way to actually connect with me. I love that, James. I love that. <laughs> Respect on that one. Um, all right, good people. You heard him. Connect with him there. If you want to go on the gram and connect with him, it's simply his you name. Do that too. Yep. James Nicholas Kinney. Do the same. Get in tune and eventually get in touch. Uh, and in, in the meantime, folks, don't forget to tell another brother, king or queen about man to man so we can keep the wellness revolution going. Plus, if you want to hear from someone like James, uh, hit me up on Instagram at Waziki, W-A-S-I-C-K-I. Give us those five star reviews. Leave a dope yes. review. Let's keep the movement moving, as I like to say. Until next <clears throat> week, I think this is uh, <laughs> very fitting. To end it, uh, peace, love, and wellness.